this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love every Saturday, and we are getting ready to get into this word. Now, what I heard from the Lord, I believe, is judgment. Judgment is at the door. Judgment. Mm. Okay, there's a song called There's Judgment in the Gate. I'm telling you. There's something going on, y'all, and we better pay attention. We're going to Isaiah chapter 3. All right, the light is in my face. It makes it hard. Okay, Isaiah chapter 3. And we are going to start. Uh, let's see. Okay. Starting at verse 5, just for the sake of time, I have three to read, so I'm just going to, you know, read excerpts. Starting at verse 5. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. When a man shall take hold of his brother, of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under my under thy hand. And that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord, to provoke the eyes of his glory to show of his countenance. The show of his countenance doth witness against them. And they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. In other words, they boast in it. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous, and this is what I say to my brothers and sisters in Christ. <clears throat> and I hope it lifts your spirits, because that's what God is doing. As for my people, oh, I got to start at verse 10. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. For my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people, and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. Hmm. I'm not even going to explain that when that speaks for itself. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord of hosts? Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. Now, here is where this reinforces what I said Three months ago, two or three months ago, the Lord gave me a word of exposure. And I believe I'm going to stop here and just put my little two cents in. I'm going to pull back from that message. The Lord is showing me that there's going to be a lot of big folks being exposed. Big name, well-known, well world-renowned, popular, whatever you want to call it. They're going to be exposed for the world to see. Their hidden sins will be revealed. Their lies will be exposed and brought out into the open. They will be proven to be whatever it is they really are after showing you what they want you to believe they think they are or they present themselves as. But here's the thing. 
there's going to be a lot of judgment going on. I honestly believe that is going to be a lot in the month of June. Now, this world has gotten to the point where it has moved away from righteousness, from holiness, from standards. So we are right in that period where the Bible says, right shall be called wrong and wrong shall be called right. And because sin will abound, the love of many will wax cold. I'm mixing them up right now. So when you see what's going on, when you see churches condoning certain types of marriages, when you see churches saying yes to what God says no to, when you see churches and church leaders becoming, as we just spoke about, motivational speakers rather than preaching the gospel, all of it. Because, see, here's the problem. A lot of it's out of greed. A lot of it's because folks want money. Money, 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 money. Money. And you, you know the song. <laughs> what happens is it's not money that is the root of all evil. It is the love of money that is the root of all evil. And when people love that money, honey, they will do whatever they can to get it through hook, through crook, through lie, through conniving, whatever they can pull out of their little bag of tricks, baby, to multiply those ducats, they will do it. They will tell you that wrong is right. They will agree with what you want to hear because they want your money, honey. You get it. All right. So it's not that they're looking out for your soul. And some of you get angry at church leaders when they correct you. Some of you get ticked off. You walk away because they're sticking to godly standards. But see, they have to answer to God. Because if they see judgment coming, if they see a flood coming, if they see disaster coming, and they, they're watch, they're the watchman on the wall, and they don't tell the people, move, run, get out of the way, they're, they're, there's danger coming. And those people are wiped away, and they're dead. Their blood is on their hands of the one that did not warn them. So many of you preachers and pastors that are running around saying, you're okay, I'm okay, everything's okay, and that's okay. Those of you who are not preparing these people for what's really coming down the pipe, those of you who are not letting people know there is a hell and there is a heaven, and their choices will decide where they go. And they have to choose right or they have to choose wrong. They have to choose this day who they will serve. God in his righteousness or man in his sin. And if you compromise with the sin, if you go along with the flow, if you uh, uh, set yourself on the wide path where broad is the way that leads to destruction, and you avoid the narrow way because you know that you're going to have fewer members. You're going to have less money coming down in, in that bucket. You're going to make less money. So you're going to have a lot less honey. You're going to end up being one of those where God says their blood is on your hands because you did not tell my people what my word said. You didn't tell my people that I'm not only a God of love and mercy, but I'm a God of wrath and judgment. Listen, you guys, don't play with God. That's what's missing in this world because there's so little respect left anymore. There's little respect for right or there's little respect for right over wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, y'all. Hang on. There is little respect <coughs> for 
uh, standards, for principles. Listen, when you have no respect for authority, you have no respect for parents, you have no respect <clears throat> for people who are your superiors and on the job site, whatever, then nine times out of 10, you're also not going to have any respect, any fear of God. And it's the fear of God that is the beginning of wisdom. So some of you see God as your patsy. He doesn't play patty cake with you the way you want to play it according to your rules. He can go play on the freeway because he ain't no good to you. And that's the way you treat him. <clears throat> so, where the Bible says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What happens? You don't like that. Because sacrifice hurts. Sacrifice is inconvenient. So if you want to have your way, you're going to avoid Rome, Romans chapter 12, starting at verse 1 and 2. You're going to avoid those two verses. You're going to avoid those scriptures in the Bible that tell you God is holy, therefore be ye holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. That's what God says. You don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that because you got Tom, Dick, and Harry, Susie, Mary, and Jane. You got all these play toys you want to play with. Whenever you want to pick them up, you want to do what you're big and bad enough to do. And the sad part is the church leaders and, the, and these country leaders are following the same suit. They're so greedy for gain. They're so greedy and arrogant and prideful for power and, and, and lordship and recognition and all of this, they will get involved in human trafficking, in pushing drugs into certain neighborhoods, into opening up as many liquor stores as they can, throwing the lottery in, in there as well because they're getting rich off of a bunch of poor folks trying to get rich overnight and all they're doing is losing their hard-earned money that their family could have used. They're making you rich. And you're making it easy for them to do it. While you get richer, they get poorer. And then you set up laws that throw people in prison left and right, left and right, left and for the silliest stuff they're in prison for the third offense of a ticket they're in prison for years and years and years upstanding working citizens just lazy forgetful and and maybe a broke or procrastinating and they pay the piper how do they pay the piper they become your modern day slave See, the slave market hasn't closed. The slave market is behind bars. It's in the prisons. That's where the slaves are. The sad part is those of you who are hooked on drugs, those of you who are hooked on alcohol, those of you who are hooked on pornography, who are hooked on prostitution, who are hooked on a lot of gambling, all these different crazy things. Guess what? You too are a slave because you are a slave to debt. You're throwing all this crap on credit cards because you can't afford it. But you're trying to get rich quick, and they know it. And they keep it dangling right in front of your nose everywhere you go. The billboards, the stores, the magazines, everywhere you go. Come into my parlor, says the spider to the fly. And the rich folks are laughing at you all the way to the bank. Because you're walking with your eyes wide open into the traps they have set for you throughout society. You have become the, the, the slave master's flunky. And the slave master, those are the rich, the elite. 
that have all this human trafficking, prostitution, drug lords working for them, uh, setting up all these different types of stores that promote pornography, pr promote all this stuff they're doing. It's called oppression. You know how we, the modern expression we like to use, passive aggressive? Well, that's what that is, baby. That's their passive aggression. They turn you into their slaves while they laugh all the way to the bank and they're steadily throwing trinkets and crap all in your face because they don't want you to get better. They don't want you to get delivered. They don't want you to break free. That's why the, the pharma, all of that is part of it. Pharma and the, the Food and Drug Administration in bed together. You keep them fat and, and, and sick, and we'll keep them nice and full of meds, and we'll just keep that money rolling in. Money, 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 money. See, what you don't realize is God makes rules for reason. He makes rules to protect his people. He makes rules. He, he said that the law was for the sinner. The law was for the lawless, not for those that are doing right. There is no need for law when you have that righteousness in your spirit. It comes as an instinct. You know when you're going against God. You feel it. You know it. But for those who are totally out of touch, they're going by man's dictates. And they're falling into all kind of potholes and pit holes and all kind of grave holes that have been dug for them. But see, they don't want you to die too soon because the longer you're sick, the more money they make. See, they don't want the food to be in, in good standards. You know, God has a rule for that, the land, growing the food, all of that, giving the land rest for seven years. No, man wants to throw a bunch of harmful chemicals in there. They want to make artificial food. They want to make artificial vitamins. They want to make artificial everything. Keep them going long enough for us to get richer and richer and richer. We don't care what happens to them. Just keep them coming. Keep them coming, baby. Uh -huh. And you keep coming. Do, 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 do. Oh, life is good. Give me them Cheetos. Oh, let me have them bur the burgers from the... Oh, yeah. And let's get some of that and some of that and some of that. And you're piling it in. Some of you are getting high off of what you're putting in you. Some of you are getting fat off of it. Some of you, you get a, a certain euphoric feeling and you don't realize addiction. Things are chemicals that make you addicted. See, this whole system is based on keeping you at a level so they can climb on top of your heads higher and higher and higher and higher while they're looking down at you. The ones making them rich. Mm-hmm. The ones doing all the slave labor for little or nothing compared to what they make. So when you look at that, and then you go by these dictates of society. You know, society is conditioned. They are told to push this, push that, make that look like a, a good thing. Oh, yeah, that trans thing. Oh, that's nice. No, it's not. Look at the people that, if you look at the videos of those that have gone down that road all the way through the surgeries and the changes, and now they want to die because of all the health issues they're having, all the psychological battles they're fighting because they don't know who they are. All this stuff is nothing but one big rabbit hole, and it's set. For you and me, by the elite. Hmm? And you are going for it, hook, line, and sinker. While God's love, everything he does is above. I mean, everything he's doing is for us. But we don't want to hear it. 
Why? Because man knows how to appeal to the flesh. The demonic realm knows how to appeal to our desires and our lusts. God is trying to teach us how to live above. Keep our minds set above on things above, on good things, on virtue, on love, on hope, on truth, honesty, cleanness. Come on now. But no, that's too boring. We don't want to live that way. We want more, more, more. How do you like it? How do you like it? More, more, more. Yeah, we want more. We want more. The big 44 ounce cup of Coca Cola. No, make it a 64 ounce cup of Coca Cola and a double, triple cheeseburger with double, triple cheese. And uh, come on now. It's all about feeding your lust. And you're going after it like the Pac Man. You, I mean, you're going after it. You don't want to hear what God has to say. All I can ask you, I've got to read another scripture. All I can ask you is please, please get in this Bible. Please find out the source of love. True love comes from God. That's agape, unconditional love. God loves you no matter what side of the fence you're on. But he's not going to bless you on the wrong side. Listen, y'all. If you just obey his word, if you just draw close to him, you would find out how beautiful he really is. You would find out how you've been played like a fiddle by the powers that be in this planet. I'm going to go on and read Micah. Chapter 3. I'm getting ready to close. Mm, mm, mm. Micah chapter 3. Woo! Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Here we go. And I said, Here I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel. Is not <clears throat> is it not for you to know judgment? Who hate the good and love the evil who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones who also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them and they break their bones and chop them in pieces and for the for the pot and as flesh within a cauldron then shall they cry unto the lord but he will not hear them he will even hide his face from them at that time as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. Thus saith the Lord <clears throat> concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry, Peace! He that putteth not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. Therefore, night shall be upon you. Woo! that ye shall not have a vision, and it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not divine. And the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded. Yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. Ooh, but truly I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Hear this, I pray you heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. They shall build up Zion and blood in Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads therefore judge for reward. And the priest, therefore, teach for hire. There it is, right there. Money, 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 money. And the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord upon us? None evil can come upon us. Therefore shall Zion for your sake be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountain of the house 
as the high places of the forest. Listen, you guys. What I was seeing in my mind's eye. Some of you have your churches set up. Where the only way people think they can get to God is to go through a priest. That is a lie from the pit. When you read uh, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, Jesus did not set that up. Jesus, when he was crucified, when he gave up the ghost, the veil that split, between, the veil that was between the people and God, where the priests had to go into the Holy of Holies, that veil was ripped from the top to the bottom. God had it done like that because people could cut something from the bottom and pull it apart from the bottom up. No, this thing was so high, so thick, and so heavy. Nobody could get up there to rip it from the top. That thing ripped all by itself by the power of God from top to bottom. What was God saying? No more priests standing between me and my people. No more anybody standing between me and my people. The only reason for any of you to stand in the gap is to pray for somebody, intercede for somebody, but not talk to God for them. That's why Jesus gave up the ghost to remove that. So that we, as the Bible says, could come boldly to the throne of grace, make our requests known. Speak directly to God. You don't need anybody talking to God for you. Don't go for that lie. What does that do? That keeps you separated from God. Stops you from getting to know him for yourself. He says, if you diligently seek me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. It's true. I have found him. I experienced his supernatural love, his touch, his voice. I've experienced him warning me. I've experienced him encouraging me, lifting my spirits, visiting me in my living room while I was doing something as mundane as reading the Bible. God will manifest himself to you in many ways. But are you seeking him? Or do you think have you gone for the lie that you have to go through a man to get to God? You read what God, what Jesus said about that. He doesn't like it. Doesn't like it at all. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let me slow myself down. Hmm. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 7. And then we're going to close. Isaiah chapter 7. Wow. I'm, I'm sorry. Micah chapter 7. Sorry about that, y'all. Micah chapter 7. Ooh, wow. Whew. Here we go. Mm, mm, mm. Woe is me, for I am, a, I am as when they have gathered the summer fruit as the gl great gleanings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first fruit. The good man has perished out of the earth. And there is none upright among men. <clears throat> they all lie in wait for blood. They haunt every man his brother with a net that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh and the judge asketh for a reward. And the great man, he uttereth his mischievous desire. So they wrap it up. The best of them is as a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of the watchman and thy visitation cometh. Now shall be their perplexity. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Some of y'all open your mouth too doggone fast, and the crap that comes out of it is killing people, spiritually, psychologically, emotionally. That's another message for another time. I had to throw my two cents in on that one. All right. <clears throat> Six. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter rises up against her mother. 
and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of their own house. Let me throw my two cents in right here. For those of you young people <clears throat> who cuss your mother out, who hit your parents, who throw temper tantrums in the house, whether you're young or old, you knock your mother on the floor trying to push out the door and then you go in a pocketbook and grab her money on the way out. What, however you're treating your parents, if you're doing disrespect, violence, uh, uh, um, verbal abuse, physical abuse, whatever the case is, disrespect is disrespect. You're shortening your years, baby. You're begging God to kill you early because the reward for honoring your mother and father is a long life. And when you don't honor your mother and father and you treat them like trash, baby, let me tell you, you got some paydays coming down the pike. Some of you will do time. Some of you will be beaten down. Your life will be one waste, one waste bit. I mean, it'll be like one tragedy after the other, after the other, after the other. And you think life is just not fair. No, baby. It started with the way you treated your parents. Now, some of their fault could be on your parents <clears throat> for not chastising you. But there are parents out there that don't chastise and their kids still respect them. So it's your choice. But if you want a blessed life, you better line up with that one, baby. You better learn to honor. You better learn to value. You better learn to obey your parents because you are calling a curse straight down from God when you don't. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Let me continue reading. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry. Mm -mm. Okay. Seven, therefore I will look unto the Lord and I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I will behold his righteousness. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Mm. Therefore shall she be trodden down as the mire of the street. In the day that thy walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far removed. I'm going to stop there because the main thing you need to see is that God rewards evil with evil. God rewards meanness, nastiness, treachery. He rewards it with curses, mm, with disaster, with sickness, with, with hardship, with oppression. Those of you who think it's okay to beat your wife, kick your wife, treat her like dirt in the street, talk to her like she's a piece of trash in front of your friends, and then you laugh about it as you boast about how you rule your house. God's got a hammer over your head. You don't see it yet. But when that anvil comes down on you, you're going to taste the bitter flavor of judgment. You think not. God will give you such a slow, miserable death, you'll be begging to die. And he'll be saying, deal with it. Just like you made your wife deal with it. Deal with it. You like pain? Enjoy the pain I put on you. Mm -hmm. See, you want to inflict pain on other people? You have no idea what kind of pain God can bring on you. You better repent and get that out of your life. Because if you don't, baby, God's going to, he's going to send you a bill. Your behind will never be able to pay it. And you'll spend the rest of your life suffering, indebted to God and the person you oppressed.
God hates oppression. <clears throat> Sorry, he hates oppression. He hates when the government oppresses its people. He hates when the prison system oppresses the inmates. He hates oppression. He hates people that oppress their kids and beat them down and beat them down and verbally abuse them. He hates human trafficking. He hates all of it, y'all. Sin is sin. Don't think because you didn't take the whip and do the whipping that your hands are clean. No, if you paid the person to do it, baby, you're just as guilty. All right. So in the name of Jesus, I pray that those of you who have heard these words, I pray the Holy Spirit convict you in a way like never before so that people will stop hurting people. People will stop living in, in a lap of luxury at the expense of those who are living poorly. Those of you who are keeping the government's money from helping the poor so that you can keep the government's money to enhance the rich, to enhance the business owners, to enhance all of that, because all you want is the money, the money, the money, the capitalist, the capitalist society at the expense of everybody you think isn't even worth being on this planet. Those are the ones God's going to rise up for, not you. Those are the ones God's going to say, come into my kingdom, not you. That's why he says, what do you think? You going to beat my people and grind them like dust? You think I'm going to be okay with that? No. I got to close for the sake of time. <clears throat> Father, we ask you to bless everyone who heard this message. Those who are comforted by it, knowing that you will come to their rescue and vindicate them. And those who are doing the dastardly deeds that this word is spoken against. I pray that you encourage those who need it and that you draw people into your bosom that need it even more. That they would truly be saved and have a change of heart. So they will change how they treat people, how they approach money, all of that. I pray in Jesus' name.